guys, it's Lady Callista. Today we're going to be talking about Dungeon and Heroes. Now this video is sponsored by the developers of the game. Now what is Dungeon and Heroes? Now Dungeon and Heroes is a 3D RPG mobile based game. And as we run through the different facets of the game, you're going to notice that it's actually quite unique in the types of things that you can do. Now, the first thing that I'll talk about are the heroes in the game. Now, this is a hero-based game. It is not based on having a certain number of troops, um, attacking other castles. It's definitely not, not that type of a game. Um, instead, you're going to be focused on being able to acquire as many heroes as possible. That's very important. Um, in each of the battles, you're able to uh, incorporate about five max. In the beginning of the game, you uh, are acquiring hero by hero. So you'll start off with one, you'll work your way to two, three, etc., until you reach five. And then you'll acquire um, additional heroes to those kind of five. And the key here is going to be making sure that you are building an effective team. Now, for those of you that are familiar with more traditional kind of RPG games, a lot of the same principles will apply. You're going to have certain heroes that are definitely going to be the tank. So what that means is a hero that can take on a lot of damage that is going to have higher than normal HP, higher than normal defense. That is going to be the hero that you're going to basically put in the middle of your formation because the middle uh, in this game basically means that they will be going up in the front and take most of the damage. Now the gladiator that I have up on the screen right now, um, he is a kind of DPS. This is also a DPS. He's basically like a ranger um, slash rogue. And this is a priest. So you definitely wouldn't want, for example, the priest to be in the center. This is uh, one of the additional DPSs. Now, there are a variety of different characters. I'm kind of running through all of them here. You can see I haven't unlocked all of them. Um, it requires a certain number of cards around those specific heroes to be able to get them. And you can kind of see a lot of these heroes are going to require 80 uh, and the way to get them is through various shops you can get them through just kind of exploration of the map and different battles um, so you want to make sure that you have a good mix within each of those teams you want to have at least one tank you want to have a couple of kind of damage dealers aka dps right that stands for damage per second and then a couple of kind of more magical type heroes, especially some that have the ability to heal your team because you are going to be taking a tremendous amount of damage. Now, something in terms of tips, right? As we're talking about the heroes, what I am keeping track of are a couple of things. The first one is making sure that I am continuously leveling up my hero. Um, the second is making sure that I am checking their gear continuously. As you're doing your various quests, you are going to get gear drops and you want to make sure you're allocating the right gear to the right hero. Now, the game does it pretty easy for you um, in that you can auto equip if you wish. Um, sometimes you may have a hero that doesn't, that isn't drop, you're just not getting the right drops, right? Um, and you might need to equip uh, gear that is perhaps meant for another hero. In the meantime, that's totally fine. The game lets you do that. But it does give you kind of those prompts to make sure that you are equipping it as optimally as possible. You also have the opportunity, in addition to kind of finding gear, to also upgrade it. Um, in order to upgrade it, you can see here I'm upgrading the Emerald Crown. It is a green level type gear. Gear in this game obviously goes um, from white to green to blue to purple to golden, and that's ultimately kind of your legendary gear. And then there's various stars that you can have against that gear. Um, so as the game progresses, you're able to kind of acquire some of that more advanced gear. But you want to make sure, and you can see here as I get to the Alchemist, um, you'll see kind of that red dot uh, for that level one robe that basically is the way the game will let you know Hey for this particular hero you might want to consider Upgrading or swapping out his gear for this particular piece because he's really the one that's supposed to wear it And it's better than what he currently has so they do it in a really easy to understand way Then the third thing that I want to make sure you guys are thinking about as you're working on your her heroes is ensuring that your actual skill levels are up so in addition to leveling up your hero you can also 
using basically the skill books that you see on the top right. Uh, you can also improve or increase the level of your hero's particular skills. You're able to unlock those skills by leveling up your hero. So it's it's kind of like one in the same in that you keep leveling up your hero. That allows you to unlock additional skills. You want to make sure you're also leveling up those skills. Now, a rule of thumb for me in any game like this, and this one is no different, is I like to make sure that most of my heroes are on par as it relates to both level and skill level, right? So I never want to make, I never want to leave my tank being the, you know, the strongest character, right? Because then we can't actually beat the other team if we don't have our damage dealers kind of up to snuff. Um, you don't want to leave your priest behind, right? Because you want to make sure that he is keeping your team up. And as you're leveling them up, they're going to have higher health needs. Your priest needs to be leveled up so he can kind of fill those needs and make sure that his healing is kind of up to par. Up to par. So it's important, I would say, to make sure that you're keeping all of them similar. Um, and as you're unlocking additional heroes, it can become a little bit difficult, right? Because you're, you're playing with a lot of different heroes and a lot of them are going to play catch up. What I just showed you there were the quests. Um, there are quests throughout the game and this is key to helping you progress in the right way. Here I'm basically showing you how I build my team. I basically took everyone kind of out of the team and I'm reallocating them so you can kind of see the positioning that I tend to use. I like to have my tank as i mentioned always be front and center um it's key because you want him to take as much damage as possible right if i were to put my priest there for example he wouldn't last all that long taking most of the damage right because he doesn't have the gear for it he doesn't have the health for it he doesn't have the defense for it so you want to put the heroes in the right slots i always like to have my main kind of tank in the middle i'll usually put um my healers off to the sides right um, and then some of my sturdier damage dealers close to my tank. So you'll see my gladiator is usually pretty close to my tank because he can take quite a bit of damage as well. Um, and then my ranger, I almost treat as another magical hero. Usually rangers are all about agility and speed and they're not about taking damage. So you want to put them in a position where they're not in that um, space on the team um, unless you absolutely have to. Now, another thing to mention, guys, is the style of fighting in this game is turn-based. So if you look to the top of your screen, you can see that various characters are kind of popping up there. So it is absolutely turn-based. Um, so you have to wait kind of for your turn. And after you've acquired enough additional kind of um, experience in that particular match, you'll see kind of that blue bar go to the max. And that basically means that you have the opportunity to use your kind of ultimate skill. Um, and the ultimate skill is obviously going to be um, pretty impactful. Now, this is a victory screen. You can see that each of the quests that they give you um, will give you kind of either a defeat or a victory. Not a big deal if you don't win. Um, if you get victories, though, you do get gold. You get additional materials to craft um, in addition to upgrade. And they'll also give you some of the cards that I mentioned before, the medals, so to speak, um, for each of the heroes so you can keep unlocking heroes. What I want you guys to get from what I just showed you here, this is the tavern. Um, the tavern will typically have a couple of kind of quests in there that you can accept, basically like missions almost that usually involve defeating someone. Um, so you want to make sure that you're constantly checking those. Here you'll see that um, in the different basically places that you can battle on the map, what they will require will be different. Now you're going to see, I'm here I'm fighting um, in a cave, and you notice I could only select three heroes. And in the very beginning of the game, this is after I've been playing a while, in the very beginning of the game, the game will explain to you, you're going to be fighting in a cave. It's pretty narrow. You can't bring in your team of five. You have to pick three. So it's pretty cool because it lets you be a little bit strategic about who you're bringing in and why you can see that for caves i always like to bring in a tank a healer a damage dealer so a pretty evenly stacked team right i'll put my tank in the middle hopefully my damage dealer is doing the damage and then my healer is going to keep my team up i don't want an overly defensive team an overly um offensive team or an overly kind of magical slash healing team like that wouldn't be able to kind of get the job done and i will say having the team structured this way has been very beneficial and has made it very easy to kind of beat these cave levels um as i've progressed in the game so as you can see another victory you can see some of the goodies that we were able to get 
I'm really interested in getting that wolf. That's actually somebody that you're able to then summon um, as part of your team. Um, but I'm quite a few cards slash medals away from getting him. Um, but this is kind of how you're able to get those, right? So that's uh, when I first started playing the game, I wasn't quite sure where I would be able to get those. You definitely get them by just kind of grind, grinding the game, right, on the world map and interacting in different ways. Um, you're able to explore the map on your horse. Uh, basically, you can go anywhere you like um, as long as it's uh, open. There are sometimes um, specific uh, battles that you need to have in order to be able to unlock a special portion of the map, right? So there's almost like a gatekeeper, and once you defeat him, you're able to kind of keep moving forward. So that's something that's important to mention. Wanted to switch gears because there are there is a lot in this game. So wanted to make sure I could cover all of it. Now, what I want to show you guys here is this is the inside of our castle. So in addition to having that whole kind of um, world where you're fighting and you have heroes, you're also kind of managing your internal castle. There are guilds in this game. You can see my guild's name is um, Equilibrium. You're able to do a bunch of stuff with your guild here. Um, you're able to do expeditions with them. You're able to set up different teams. Um, let's see what else. I'm just kind of scrolling through here. Um, you're able to do trials with them. I did a trial yesterday with my team. It took a very long time, but we were successful. Um, you're able to also donate, which is important. Um, and in those donations, there's basically four different trees that your guild is able to unlock, right? That are going to help you with like domestic affairs or strength or defense. And everybody's able to take advantage of that. There's also a guild shop where you can use your guild coins. Um, and then there's kind of like the, the different kind of guild rankings and you're able to see all the members in your guild and see when they were last online, which is really helpful if you are looking to put together a squad to do a trial or to do a challenge with, right? So they make it really simple. Um, I believe that you're able to join a guild once you hit around level eight. So pretty early on in the game. So you're able to kind of learn with a group of folks um, and obviously the guilds span across the world. There are guilds that are in almost any language you can imagine. Um, so you, you should definitely be able to find something that appeals to you. The next building I wanted to talk about is the Hellgate. Um, so you can see here I have kind of my, I'll just call them my typical squad, right, that I like to roll with. At this point, I only have six heroes, so there's not a whole lot of variety that I can do. But Hell's Gate is basically you have the opportunity to fight this monster up to five times. They are very good drops. Um, the very first monster is unlocked at level 15. Right now I'm level 19, so I was able to fight him. You can see the battle's going pretty well. He's not doing a ton of damage to us. Again, um, when I was fighting him at level 15, this fight became a little bit harder, right? It was harder just because my heroes weren't quite as strong. Um, so we did take a kind of incremental damage and it was kind of hard to bring him down. I think now at level 19, this becomes very, very easy. And you can see it does give quite a bit of gold, which is great. Um, you do need gold to be able to kind of keep leveling up um, some of your gear. You can see the additional monsters unlock at different levels. Level 20, there'll be an additional unlock. You can do um, this particular monster up to five times, right, until reset. The next thing I wanted to show you guys is kind of the arena. Um, arena split out between kind of like ultimate and elite. And this is basically a, an opportunity that you have to basically build your squad and you have them up there and people can challenge you and you're able to kind of get goodies now what i did here is i am preparing to challenge someone um who had obviously set up a team they have it out there um you're able to see how strong your team is versus them so i really like the graphics on this one right they definitely created kind of a mini arena as you're going to be going up against um whomever you decided to challenge we got a victory um, so wanted to show you a couple of other things that we can do in here. This is kind of just that um, viewpoint of the arena. You can see that um, I defeated and I cannot pronounce what that says, but basically the person on the lower right hand side. Um, so they're basically grayed out. You can't keep challenging the same people that you've already want, kind of defeated. Um, but you can see there it's divided between like elite and ultimate. Ultimate has different parameters around it in terms of what you can do. Wanted to go ahead and click on the rift. Um, and again, these buildings, guys, will unlock at different levels. Some of them you need level 13, some you need level 15. Um, at this point, at level 19, I have a good sense of most of the buildings. And you can see here we have a dual king, a magic trial, legendary treasure, and then some of the gold hunt at the end. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and do the duel just to show you guys. And again, 
Um, each of those different things, like the magic and the gold, they unlock at different levels. I'm gonna show you that in a bit, but it's not like all that stuff is unlocked at once. And we were able to win our duel. Uh, so let's take a look. I wanted to show you guys um, the different levels just to give you an idea, but you can see Duel King 2, you need to be level 28. Um, and then for the different types of trials, um, and you can see here, like we can keep going, right? If we want to do it again, you can do it up to three times um, at level one, but you can see the magic trial, um, the legendary treasure, and then the gold hunt. You need higher levels, like usually in the mid to high 20s, something to keep in mind. Now, this is the flame dragon, you guys. And I'm just gonna get, I'm just gonna let you guys know, I just get wrecked here still. Um, my heroes are definitely not strong enough. What I'm showing you guys here is, you do have the opportunity um, using your gems to inspire. Inspire will improve the amount of damage that you do. So I, and it is maxed out at 50. 50% 50 um, from a damage perspective. I'm also just showing you quickly the shop there. I kind of um, made sure I had the typical crew that I run um, and went into battle. Wanted to show you guys, I think you have to be a higher level to be able to beat this. I'm sure the rewards are amazing, um, but he is tough. He is a type of boss that has a very interesting kind of final move that um, I feel like a little bit is gonna be probability. You're gonna see here, we're doing awesome. Like look at his HP, it's like going down. I was actually feeling really good. This was the first time that I had done it with all the Inspire. I was recording, so I wanted to make sure I, I gave myself the, my best shot. But look, he does that. He completely removes all your defenses, and then he burns the entire team, and you're all wiped. And I tried this a bunch of times, and that was usually the outcome over and over again. Even if he did that move and he didn't kill everyone, he would kill at least three of the five. And then, um, and you can see here, I just keep trying and trying because I'm stubborn. Um, even if I had two people um, survive, so I would, I had my gladiator and my tank survive, uh, it didn't matter because then, you know, he would quickly, it would be, his, as soon as it was his turn, he would do the same thing. He like shield breaks, removes all your defense, and then does the kind of that ultimate fire move and we would just all get wiped. Um, I really think that my heroes just need to be stronger to be able to take all that damage. Right now, they just don't have the health to do so. And my healer can't keep anything up. So you can see here, um, my tank is right on the verge of dying. The only one up is the healer, and he's going to take all the fire damage. Obviously, he's not going to be able to withstand that, so I got to defeat. And I tried this a couple of times to see what the outcome was, and I can tell you guys the outcome is different each time. Um, in terms of who stays up, who doesn't, whether anybody stays up, but the end result was the same. So that basically tells me it's not the right time. I need some more time to be able to defeat this boss. Here, just wanted to show you guys quickly um, the rest of the city. There's a warehouse. There is a cottage. The cottage lets you hire additional workers. Those workers are needed um, to populate your Congress hall, and that's where you can basically decide um, how many workers you want at your iron mill, your fabric mill, your leather mill, your mana, mana pool. So you're able to do that there. Um, wanted to quickly show you this too, guys. So um, there is the opportunity to get keys throughout the game. Now you can see the drops for the gold keys are amazing. I had five keys, save them so I could open them on video and you can see they consist of like purple gear. There's additional hero medals. It's awesome, right? Like this is really, really good stuff. Um, so it's fantastic if you're able to get those gold keys the way that i was able to get them is again just playing the game um haven't spent a dime on this it's very free to play friendly um you can see you can see how much gold i have and that is literally just grinding just playing the game um and you what i hope you also took away is you can see a big difference between the silver keys and the gold keys like gold keys are significantly better in terms of what those drops look like this is the shop that i have the market so to speak um the market will have things like the medals, right, that you can see how many medals I need. If you look at the upper right hand side, you can see those stars. You'll have a certain number over a certain number and you can see how many additional medals I need. Um, what I was trying to do at this point was trying to upgrade my priest. I think he's still uh, level green, um, but didn't have priest up for sale right now. And I didn't feel like spending gems to refresh what I had in the current market. They also have equipment. You can find things like equipment, material to make equipment, as well as scrolls. These scrolls are necessary when you're trying to upgrade to like rare 
blue purple legendary like as you're trying to go up the chain in terms of the type of equipment that you want to create you are going to need those specific scrolls so this is a great way to get them and guys here i'm just showing you guys um again just the rest of the map it is free travel right so um you're able to just by kind of clicking the screen decide where you want to go um and if there isn't an easy way to get there it'll kind of find the long way to get there right um they are really good about highlighting on the map kind of the next thing that you can do in a quest also on the map something i wanted to mention is you'll randomly find treasure chests sometimes they will require a key typically the person that you need to get the key from is standing very close so you can go ahead and do that defeat them and you're able to um be able to get the key to open the treasure chest in the treasure chest you will find things for example gold materials you might find weapons so it's awesome you might also just find um resources so that's another thing to be mindful of um but it's a ton of fun there's a lot to do in the game as you can see um and they do have it in a way to make it very easy um if you have any questions please let me know um the game is available on ios and apple thanks so much for watching